And there it is. Max Verstappen has won the 2021 Dutch Grand Prix. The crowd are going absolutely ecstatic right now. I mean, all weekend you could hear the crowd cheering over the television coverage, drowning out the sound of the cars. It just seems like a really good environment atmosphere to experience. I think Formula One can definitely learn something from this weekend in how to get a crowd engaged into a race. Verstappen knew he had to get a good start to keep the lead into turn one because overtaking as it proved to be was going to be difficult throughout this Grand Prix. About six laps into the race, drivers were coming over the radio to message that there's no way they're going to be able to keep their pace advantage and conserve the tires at the same time. And it was going to be a trade-off in either doing a two-stop or a one-stop with a very slow first stint. Mercedes brought Lewis in on lap 19 to switch to mediums and perform the undercut. He took about a second and a half to two seconds out of Verstappen that lap. And they extended Bottas' first stop on the soft, back in Bottas up into Verstappen and then allowing Lewis to catch up to Verstappen. It worked so well that before Max could get past Bottas, Lewis is only 0.7 of a second behind Max. We continued to hear over the radio that Lewis was not happy with his tires, but every time he complains about his tires, he just puts in a fastest lap. So it's like the oldest trick in the book and it's a little played out. <laughs> he does this for every race now. It's like the boy that cried wolf. We don't believe you. <laughs> but every time Lewis would put a fast lap in, Max could match it or allow Lewis to catch up and then just pull away. So Mercedes knew they had to try something different. So they brought Lewis in on lap 39, put him on to another set of mediums. I think it was a U set of mediums. And Lewis came out in a bit of traffic. He came out behind, I think it was Latifi and it was a Williams and a McLaren. I think it was Ricardo and the McLaren. And it was kind of a forced stop. It came out of the blue. We heard over the radios that Verstappen was coming in within the next five laps, but boom, Mercedes was like, nope, we're coming in now. Trying to catch Red Bull out. And they kind of, they caught everybody out. Verstappen then responded with pitting the next lap and went on to the hards. Red Bull hasn't been very good on the hard tires. They're definitely better on the softer compound tires and it's vice versa. It's usually, Mercedes that are better on the harder compound tires. The hard tires would easily take Max to the end of the race. It seemed like today the pace advantage of the Red Bull was going to be enough because Max was able to control that gap to Lewis to the checkered flag. The last four laps were a little bit strange for Mercedes because they brought Bottas in, put him on some softs, and then he was setting purple sectors and Mercedes came over the radio like James came over the radio and was like Bottas, you need to slow down, do not set the fastest lap. And Bottas did end up setting the fastest lap, but apparently on the little mini sectors, it did show that he did slow down in the third sector. Mercedes then brought Lewis in, put him on some softs, and he was able to set the fastest lap and earn that extra point. Which is probably a good time for me to tell you about the top 10. So the top 10 finishers were Verstappen, Hamilton, Bottas, Gasly, Leclerc, Alonso, Sainz, Perez, Ocon, and Norris. But in terms of the championship battle, we have Verstappen in first with 224 points. 24 and a half points. 224 and a half points. Oh, that sounds weird saying. And Lewis in second with 221 and a half. Point five. Do you say a half or point five? I don't know. So yeah, Verstappen's back in the lead of the championship, but I'm expecting Hamilton to retake the championship lead in Italy because Mercedes have been deadly quick around that track. They've just been dominant around that track. The only thing, the only things that throw them off in Monza is either a freak penalty or an illegal Ferrari engine. Today's driver of the day was Sergio Perez. He was knocked out in Q1, so Red Bull decided to change his engine, so he started from the pit lane. In the opening laps of the race, he destroyed his front right tire at a lockup in turn one, thus forcing him to pit again. But he still battled his way back up to eighth. I mean, Perez making his way up through the field was probably the most entertaining thing to watch. While Akon telling Alpine that he's faster than Alonso was the funniest thing we heard all weekend. Other than that, this is just the initial reactions. Um, it was an interesting race. I would give it about for the crowd. Oof, the crowd makes. <sighs> The race itself was yeah, to good, yeah, good because the strategy was interesting to see Verstappen versus two Mercedes, but other than that there wasn't really much excitement, I guess? Um, excitement? I guess because the cars just can't follow. I think the 2022 regulations, if the cars could actually follow, it's going to be an amazing race next, next year. But my rating would be... <sighs> A 9 out of 10 because of the crowd. The, cr <laughs> the crowd all, yeah. 9 out of 10 just because of the crowd. The crowd has been amazing. Alright, hope you have a good day and bye.